Hi everybody, uh, my name is David Farrell and I'm a quantum plant alchemist and plant medicine man and today I just wanted to give you a little update uh, about the latest offerings from quantum plant healing. Uh, as many of you who watch the uh, YouTube channel regularly will know uh, through the various podcasts that I do with different people that uh, we've been running a series of global plant immersions over the last six months working with Dandelion, the Artemisias, Elder, Yarrow, and then finally we were working with the U right at the end of last year over the winter solstice. Now I've talked a lot about these different plants uh, in various different astrological and plant uh, podcasts and shows that I've been doing. Um, but now uh, we are coming to the first plant immersion of this year, and we will be starting that with the very wonderful uh, nettle plant, uh, Urtica dioca is the most common form of nettle, um, and that's going to be starting on March the 1st, but just by way of a little introduction about this plant, uh, you know, and why, why now and why nettle? And again, for any of you who watch the YouTube channel regularly, uh, you'll know that I put these little videos out uh, as by way of a bit of an information release about where we're at right now with the astrology and why working with certain plants, but also to inform those of you who are interested in following on a sort of quantum plant astrological path, uh, how this can work uh, for you both on a healing and magic and manifestation level. You know, um, we're now a number of plants into uh, a sequence or a series of immersions uh, over at quantumplanthealing.com. We also have now initiated a full quantum members group. We have live calls uh, twice a month to that group, as well as the live call that we do to the basic members group each month. And the numbers are really growing quickly in, in our kind of quantum plant tribe. And, you know, as part of that, many people are always asking myself and Bella, which uh, plants uh, to work with or how to teach and what we've been saying really over the last few months is that the best way to learn how to work with quantum plant intelligence is to do the immersions. That's why the plants gave them to us. You know, we've uh, given lots of different bundle options for those immersions that have already taken place. And, you know, many people now are understanding why we keep pointing them towards dandelion. A dandelion really is the architect of the 5D new earth way of living, of being even. But, you know, in order to get to that very uh, sort of, a uh, new state of being, uh, we have to do our homework. And that's where the Artemisias came in again to help us cleanse the field, to cleanse the terrain of any lower frequencies that no longer served us. Elder was really about many other things, but about becoming the hollow bone so that we can channel the higher impulses from our higher self, and maybe even from plants and other higher beings. But also she really asked us to, to step up and ask ourselves, what is my truth? What is my truth? What am I doing here right now? What, what, what am I involved in? What is the point of all of this? Um, through that immersion, it became very clear that many of us were having an issue with our throat chakras and not able to speak our truth. Uh, you know, we're able to speak out at all even. And, and so, you know, again, this is also part of the move towards sovereignty that began with dandelion and that royal leonine heart, the big lion heart, that sense of sovereignty that is really, really fundamental to a newer 5D way of being, living in the way of the unconditional love of the heart. Um, we then moved on to the yew tree, which was really teaching us about how to be the same as the hollow toroidal tree, the world tree. You know, the yew is one of those uh, grand elders, possibly even the grandest of all of the elders, 260 million years and counting that being has been here on the planet, uh, certainly seen everything that humans have had to offer and probably some of our non-human ancestors too. Um, so then we came into this year and this is that we're already now coming into the third month of the year to uh, the beginning of some very, very important astrological sequences, uh, which again, you can see more about on my latest podcast with uh, Kelly Hunter, Moons of Mythos, episode number seven is looking at the full, uh, full uh, the new moon in Pisces and the full moon in uh, Virgo and asking about, you know, a lot of the new transits that are coming in with Pluto moving very soon into... Uh, Aquarius for the first time from Capricorn <clears throat> now at the 29th degree, but also all of these new Aries energy and, you know, many uh, new uh, ingresses into Aries coming up over the next few weeks. And of course, then we're going to be having a, uh, a new moon in Aries uh, anyway around the time of the the um, the equinox. So um, why nettle? Why now? So nettle is a plant that's deeply connected to Mars, very, very connected to the element of fire. Um, but 
It's also a plan that's an adaptogen. This is a plan that can bring us back into balance, bring us back into harmony. Uh, adaptogens are always trying to bring us back into a place of equilibrium and balance within ourselves. So these are some of the basic qualities of nettle, but nettle is also a plant that's rich in nutrients, rich in calcium, rich, uh, rich in fortifying vitamins and minerals. And after a long, dark, uh, I would say somewhat toxic winter where we have been subjected to many toxic energies and entities in our world, the need to strengthen our immune system to fortify ourselves, to strengthen ourselves, uh, to strengthen our boundaries. This is something that's really important. I see this a lot in my work as a healer is that hum humans in general are not good on boundaries. And if we look at some of the processes of the last, few, last couple of years, really, we can understand that humans ability to say no and step up for themselves and be sovereign and say, you know what, maybe that's a, a process that works for you, but it's not a process that works for me. I don't want to get involved. And not only do I not want to get involved, I don't want to have to argue about it with you. Uh, it's your truth. It's my truth. How do we step up and hold our boundaries around our own truths? If we want to be sovereign, we have to be strong on our boundaries. We have to be able to say, hey, that doesn't work for me. Great. If you want to do it, whatever it might be, knock yourself out. But that doesn't work for me and I'm not going to do it. And I, I don't have to, it's my right as a human being. This is the planet of free will and I always have the option to choose. But if we have spongy boundaries or we're not very good at standing up for ourselves, or we always let other people's opinions take precedent over our own, or we too easily absorb other people's narratives, whatever they might be, then we're not being sovereign. And nettle is the plant that gives us the strength, the fortitude, the fire, not to be aggressive and up in people's faces and saying, God damn it, get the hell away from me. But with the energy of Mars and with the energy of nettle, in a very nice way, we can say, get out of my space. This is my space, my sovereign space, my toroidal field of energy, my self-regenerating system that is mine and mine alone to manage. And this is a big part of the process also about how to manage the non-physical aspect of your terrain. You know, we manage the physical aspect through the right food we eat or the right exercises that we have, etc. But really and truly, what's even more important is we have to manage the non-physical aspects of our terrain. And so a lot of the understanding of how to manage that is to first of all, accept that we have a non-physical uh, aspect to ourselves, which uh, I'm sure for most of the people watching this video is not a new idea, but probably for lots of humanity, it's, it's something that's going to come towards them very quickly right now, as we enter into a very, very strong process of Piscean energy, very, very watery. And we also have Neptune in Pisces right now. So there is a lot of illusion and delusion coming at us uh, from um, the hallucination box, otherwise known as TV, uh, but also maybe from ourselves. We can delude ourselves. We can convince ourselves of alternative truths that somehow take us away from our actual truth or our actual authenticity or our actual integrity. And, um, you know, this is where the uh, balancing adaptogenic qualities and nettle can really come to the fore because there is a long tradition of nettle actually being good for meditation. Uh, you know, as I've often talked about in the past, uh, nettle is deeply connected with the Tibetan master Milarepa, um, who started out as a sorcerer, as a brujo, uh, and through a process of um, uh, coming into contact with his, uh, with his teachers, he then ended up meditating in the cave for 20 years and drinking nettle tea. And I'm sure, um, having spent 20 years really only with that as his only uh, food source, uh, and again, you know, that's an amazing thing in itself, we can survive just on nettle. This is a plant that has so much richness to it that actually we probably could survive only on nettle in the same way that Milarepa did, and in the same way that the Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree for 40 days. He probably had a profound experience with the Bodhi spirit. And I came to understand some years uh, after studying Buddhism deeply um, in, first of all, India and then Italy, that uh, what's not so well known is that after the Buddha uh, did his 40 days under the Bodhi tree, he then went and sat uh, looking at the Bodhi tree for another period of some days as if to almost understand like, what just happened to me there and to contemplate his own experience with this very profound spirit, the Bodhi tree. But, you know, Milarepa did the same with nettle. And if we can come back to this place of being centered in ourself, 
as me and Kelly were talking about on the Moons and Mythos show, self-centered is a, a phrase that often seems to have um, maybe more selfish connotations, but actually if we're centered in ourselves, that's got to be a good thing, right? Because it means that we're able to be more flexible and flow with the watery energies that are definitely going to be washing over all of humanity over the next, uh, probably for the next couple of years, while Saturn is in Pisces for two and a half years, we're going to have to learn how to hold our structure, uh, not just a societal structure, but an individual structure. How do I hold my structure? Uh, in all of this kind of chaotic, watery energy and with it being Pisces and mutable, maybe we're losing sight of the, the banks, maybe we're losing sight of clear land, maybe we're feeling all at sea, maybe we're feeling adrift. Uh, the watery analogies go on and on and certainly me and Kelly got through quite a few of them in, in the show that we did. But look, you know, uh, one of the other interesting things I just want to touch upon finally in this little sort of uh, preview of why nettle, why now, is that uh, nettle has a tradition, certainly in, in traditional uh, folklore and witchcraft, of being, um, of being a curse breaker or a hex breaker. And, you know, with the energy of Orcus uh, very strongly present in the astrology at the moment, particularly on this upcoming full moon in Virgo, where it's conjunct, uh, I feel like we're being asked to look at the old contracts of the past and certainly within that space, curses uh, are somehow a kind of a contract, a magical energetic contract, maybe not the nicest one, um, but uh, nettle is a plant that can help us to undo those energetic binds to the old world, the old worlds of magic, the old worlds of manipulation, the old worlds of, you know, the old paradigm, all of this stuff that we need to leave behind us if we are to progress to ascend. And again, you know, a lot of the immersions we've been doing have been helping to remove the lower level gunk, first of all, from this life, but increasingly working with Dandelion, the Time Lord, specialists looking at other timelines where uh, these kinds of frequencies maybe are still playing out for us in other aspects of ourselves. Uh, you know, increasingly, yeah, I've come to look at time as being something very flexible and fluid and that past lives are really actually just concurrent timeframes. Somehow it did in a linear way seem in the past, but some other aspect of myself, of my higher self, is manifesting still in those timeframes. And through doing the healing work in those timeframes, it frees up other energies to come forwards into this time space continuum so that we have all of the gifts, resources, but most of all, the holistic sense of self to be able to receive all of the light that is pouring onto the planet right now as wonderful astrologers like Pam Gregory talk about a lot. We are really receiving a lot of light energy, but that's all well and good if we can actually receive it. If we are so clogged that our physical energetic terrains are dense and heavy, there's nowhere for the light to come in. It's just literally gonna get repelled because of the dense frequency. So this plant, this wonderful plant, nettle, uh, has so much to share. Um, there's gonna be a series of wonderful transmissions from many of my favorite teachers I work with, including uh, including Kelly, who's going to be doing a piece about uh, nettle and Mars, uh, working with uh, my wonderful brother, Pete Jackson, Maine, the herbalist and iridologist, whose profound sense of uh, plant knowledge, uh, but also now from a quantum perspective, is really opening up new doors in the pioneering work that many of us are seeing and also going to be working with my uh, dear sister, Rebecca O'Reilly, the nutritionist and uh, other sisters like uh, uh, Emily Watt, who's an acupuncturist and Eastern, Medi Eastern medicine specialist, and also Sandy Corcoran, a Toff Tarot card reader, but also a dream decoder and general all round uh, source for interesting esoteric wisdom and uh, various aspects to do with plants from that perspective. So there's going to be a lot going on. Also going to be having a live uh, Kundalini yoga session uh, with my friend and sister Kirsty Lewis. Uh, who's uh, been a part of the immersions and uh, teaches us how to channel the energies of the plants, often working with a tincture or in essence through our systems. And again, this is really, really good. You know, we can really take on board this powerful spring tonic plant, nettle into our system. We can drink nettle tea every day. We can go and pick it fresh right now. You know, what can be more exciting than getting our own fresh uh, nutrients straight from the garden and nettle is a plant a bit like dandelion that's often sprayed on and cut down and you know we're told that it's a weed and all of the rest of it but this is another one of the superheroes this is a super super food super being super plant and you know we're going to be working across another 13 day mayan wave spell working with the energy of the the blue hand which is also really about centeredness about meditation but about healing 
and about how to use our hands in this way. So this is a really powerful time in the run up uh, to the equinox energy, but also with all of this strong energy entering Aries. Now we're really being given the chance to shift from the dreaming space of the element of air, which really runs in the Northern Hemisphere from winter solstice to spring equinox. And then we had Imolk, which is a halfway point of that, is like how now to turn our ideas the air into fire manifestation. And so uh, again, referring to the show I did with Kelly, uh, you can see many of these impulses of new beginnings. Am I set? Am I ready to go? But also still having those um, uh, retros of like, of Pluto really asking us to, um, to review everything. Also the 29th degree of Capricorn, we're really getting a big review of top-down hierarchy and how um, we've uh, been really controlled by those energies and maybe now how we can start to take uh, responsibility and sovereignty back for ourselves. But how to do that by being centered, by being clean and clear in our terrain and our thinking, being honest in our integrity, speaking our truth, living our truth, being a self-regenerative system, but also being boundaried and living life in a calm, harmonious way that's balanced in that center space of our own toroidal field. And how do we then navigate the collective oceans of consciousness that is the watery Piscean realm, um, but as an individuated sense of self, an individuated being, but also deeply connected to all of our brothers and sisters who share that ocean of consciousness with us. So this is by way of a little uh, preview uh, for the um, incoming uh, impulses uh, and offerings over at quantumplanthealing.com. Uh, we look forward uh, to hopefully seeing some of you over there. There's a lot going on, not just with the nettle immersion, but also with the uh, membership groups. There's both the uh, paid for and the free, and each one has its own uh, certain level of offerings each month. And uh, we'd love to see you. This is a growing quantum plant uh, healing tribe. Uh, uh, and there's a lot of beautiful sharing that goes on and we've created a really beautiful space within the website for people to connect, not just through the internet, but also in person. We have uh, dedicated people on the ground now in quite a few locations over the world who are acting as contact points to help um, people find medicines, uh, but also just to find like-minded people because increasingly, I know many of us have been feeling somewhat isolated maybe and the winter certainly is a time when we tend to be a little bit more inwards anyway but now with spring and the energy of out and fire coming and lambing season and birthing and all of the rest of it i suspect uh, many of you out there are like us and we want to get out and connect with people but how to do this in a way that works safely and coherently for us and i think that's a big part of the journey for humanity over the next uh probably the next six months to a couple of years so anyway i uh, hope that's been of interest to many of you please do check out the other wonderful shows that have just come out on the youtube channel i uh, did a nice piece with rebecca about the spring greens and uh, you know how these plants can also help us at this time of year and also going to be doing a spring equinox special uh, coming up right at the end of the month or, or an Aries equinox special, sorry, with the wonderful Pam Gregory. So keep an eye out for that. And in between many other offerings coming for the YouTube channel and the QPH website. So hopefully see you all again very soon. Thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, this is a really, really powerful, potent time. Really encourage all of you, as always, to make the most of the new moon energy, set those great prayers, those great intentions, and really step into the vision that you have for yourself uh, in the new Earth uh, vibrations and frequencies. Thank you, everybody, again for listening, and hope to see you soon. Take care for now.